So my name is Kevin Pribel. I am a research-focused data scientist at Humana. And today I'm going to be giving a brief introduction to Apache Zeppelin notebooks using uh, PySpark 2.0. Um, I had posted in the Slack chat the repo for this talk. Um, and you can grab it from here if you'd like to uh, build it yourself. I wouldn't recommend trying it now. It takes about two hours if you are to build Spark and everything else from, from scratch. Um, but it has a, a vagrant and um, virtual box solution and an Ansible recipe, and it should build everything for you. You can go ahead and start that up yourself if you'd like to try that out later. So the question I get a lot is, what are Zeppelin notebooks? Um, we have Jupyter notebooks that everyone is pretty familiar with. Um, our studio has started their notebooks. Um, and those are kind of the big ones. And, and Zeppelin notebooks are, uh, let me go back to this, are looking to be the uh, all-in-one notebook. So dashboard, um, WebSocket, you can uh, use that to share data. It will have interpreters for both big and small data solutions. Um, and it's, it's pretty flexible, but it, it's a little rough at the, the moment. So some background on Zeppelin. It just graduated to be a top-level project for Apache back in May. And it had been with Apache since December 2014. Originally, it was based on a commercial product that didn't go very far. I just don't think it had the, the support. And so it was donated to Apache, where it has gotten a lot of um, attention pretty quickly. Um, and again, it's supposed to be a multi-purpose notebook it, to handle ingestion, discovery, analytics, and then visualization and collaboration. So right now, there are about 20 different backends that Zeppelin uh, supports. A lot of the popular ones, you have um, R, Python, PySpark, um, all the, the Apache databases are there. Um, and one of the nice things about Zeppelin Notebooks is that you're able to write your own interpreter. And so if you have a data source that isn't currently supported, it's pretty easy to write your own in Java or uh, Scala. So um, one of the big differences between Zeppelin Notebooks and Jupyter Notebooks is that Jupyter Notebooks started as an offshoot of um, the IPython Notebook. So it was Python-based, uh, relatively focused on that environment, whereas Zeppelin Notebooks are um, pretty tightly integrated with Spark and Hadoop. So it's much more focused on uh, large data, big data solutions, um, and that integration is pretty ev evident as you, you go through. So it's written in Java, um, and so you can stay in the same language as, as you go through. Uh, it's got automatic um, injection for SQL for Spark. Um, you can use your Java runtime libraries um, and the dependencies directly from uh, uh, Zeppelin. And then you can cancel and display jobs that are currently running in Spark directly from Zeppelin notebooks. Data visualization is also a key element of Zeppelin Notebook. So it has um, some basic charts built in, interactive charts. Uh, one thing that we don't see in uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and for anything that's not currently supported by the built-in uh, visualizations, you can display any other visualization library that you like, such as Matplotlib. Seaborn, uh, or if you're using R, ggplot2. So Zeppelin sits between the Spark interpreter uh, and then the web output that you see. So there is a Zeppelin server that runs in the back end. You have a WebSocket with REST API that uh, presents the data to your web browser. Uh, and then you can view the data either as text, HTML, you can view it in tabular data, or uh, it just recently upgraded to Angular 2.0. It was uh, Angular, I think, 1.6 before that. Um, 
this is a, a, a quick snapshot of what the built-in chart types look like for Zeppelin. So if you have a data structure, uh, you can pull it into these built-in chart types. So it has built-in pivot charts, uh, very similar to what you would expect to see with Excel, except now you're able to do this in a notebook format, uh, both on Spark and Hadoop. So you're able to um, scale that data processing uh, much more than you could with other tools. And so this is just a, a picture of what that would look like. So you can, in the values for the balance and average, you can do max, min, sum, uh, the min, and a few others. And then depending on which groupings you have and keys, you can build your tables very similarly, very similarly to how you do them in Excel. Zeppelin notebooks also have very flexible layouts, something that uh, is currently missing from Jupyter. So you're able to set the width of your, um, these are called paragraphs in Zeppelin instead of um, cells. And so you can set the cell width or the, the paragraph width and you can move them up and down and arrange them at will. Zeppelin also has built-in dynamic forms. So if you need to uh, provide some input, this is just a, a quick picture of what they look like. I'll, I'll show a demonstration of these in a minute. And it's also uh, really focused on collaborative sharing. Uh, so it has built-in um, um, uh, version control, something that has been very difficult to do in Jupyter Notebooks with its JSON format. Uh, and so you can one-click uh, version control in Jupyter or in uh, Zeppelin, you can also use the built-in WebSocket to output any of your graphs directly to your web browser and share those and host those um, in an iframe inside of your website. And so this is just a, a quick picture of what that would look like. And so since this is PyData, uh, I built my Zeppelin uh, instance using PySpark or Spark 2.0. And so I just wanted to briefly touch on what some of the new features of uh, Spark 2.0 are. Uh, Spark 2.0 is a, kind of a unifying release. It brings the uh, data frame and data set uh, differences between Java and Python into kind of Unity. And so um, due to the lack of type safety for R and Python, the data frame is the main programming interface. It also has substantially improved uh, SQL support, so you can do subqueries finally, which is very nice before you weren't able to do that. Uh, you also have native CSV reading, uh, thanks to Databricks. And then it is substantially faster than previous versions of Spark, so between two and, and 10 times faster for common SQL operators and then data frame operations. And then for uh, the machine learning library, MLlib, you have model persistence. And so it, you're also able to pipeline your data much better than you were in previous releases. And the pipelines are pretty similar across the different languages, Scala, Java, Python, and R. And then there are many more machine learning models that you're able to do, including linear discriminant analysis, Gaussian mixture modeling, generalized linear regression, um, and more than these were all missing previously from uh, the uh, earlier releases. So um, that's as uh, much as I have for slides, but I'm going to pop into a Zeppelin instance and kind of show you what we're working with. So I have this running off the local virtual machine from the GitHub repo. And so I will go ahead and just um, quickly make sure that Spark is running. And so by calling PySpark, you can see that um, everything's good there. You can import your most popular libraries, NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, um, and anything else that you may want. Zoom in. Yeah. Let's see. Mm. 
Is that better? Yeah. All right. Uh, hold on. A yep. <laughs> little bit of delay. And so, um, as we mentioned, there's the built-in visualization libraries, but you're also able to use uh, any of the other visualization libraries that you may like. So, for example, I'll go ahead and I will plot with uh, matplotlib. And we get the output in line, just like you would with Jupyter. And if you want to do something a bit fancier, we can go ahead and get a much prettier visualization. Um, you can also use your uh, standard pandas libraries if you want to import data directly from a CSV source, and this is something new for Spark 2.0. And so I'll grab the Titanic data set and import it via pandas. Um, now, one of the other nice things that you can do with Zeppelin is that you're able to pass data or objects directly between languages within the notebook. And so, right now, I'll create an object in Spark. This uh, Python secret. And then I can pass it directly back to uh, PySpark. And Python. And then, actually, where is. I should. Ah. So, let me zoom out just a little bit. I had these out of order. So, what I need to do here. So you can go ahead and, and move the cell up. I should have ran this one first. And then I can get that object back from Spark. So you can pass back and forth that way. Again, you can use um, some other visualization libraries. Here I'll just draw a science wave. So they're very familiar, um, but you have the ability to plot in line as well. Um, so let me grab a couple other interesting things about Zeppelin. So here are some of the dynamic forms. And so um, using markdown in a cell, you can type in a name and get that out in your, your output. You can also um, have drop down forms directly in there. Um, so today's Monday, today's Thursday, um, and that is just using Markdown, but if you want to use uh, Spark, PySpark, you can do the same thing. And here, this is just a, a mapping of values, um, so the different days to numbers. Um, so if you have a dashboard that you're trying to create, you can create these uh, drop downs and uh, dynamic forms very easily. So, this is just another uh, example of the built in uh, plotting library. So, let me go ahead and grab this text. I'm going to have to zoom out just a little bit to get this all on the screen. There's just a word count for a block of text, but you can view it as a table for each of the words. You can view it as a bar chart. You can change the sum to count, total counts. 
in min. Um, you do the mix out pie charts. Although this particular um, one doesn't work well as a, a pie chart or an area plot. You can also do built-in maps um, as well. And then um, I had a bit more presented, uh, set up, but I was built in 0.6 and, and 6, 0.61, it's not working. So I'm gonna grab this off Zeppelin Hub. And this is uh, another example of some of the dynamic charts that you can do within um, Zeppelin. So here we're grabbing uh, bank data by age. You can view it as um, either grouped or stacked. So again, you can change the values directly within your, um, your charts. If you want to view it as a, a pie chart, you can do that as well. Again, um, and this is all just running off of SQL. So you can use any of the, the interpreters dynamically within the, um, within the different uh, paragraphs. And so if we want to, um, actually I can't do it on this one, but let me go ahead and show you how you can output directly to a web uh, socket. So let's go ahead and there it is. We can link this out, and now you can put this in an iframe uh, directly within your website. I mentioned uh, built-in version control, so you can go ahead and commit. So version one, and um, just that easily. Okay. Are there any questions? Yes. On the hub. Uh, um, that's just, you can use wget or anything else you want to in order to import that data directly to your VM or, or your, your Spark instance. So this would just be bouncing off the Spark instance. Um, the only reason I'm grabbing this off Zeppelin Hub at the moment is that the visualizations aren't working with 0.61. Yes. So you can, you can hide the output. Um, you can, uh, where is it? You can hide it, you can show the editor, you can hide the output. And then you can also switch the entire notebook to be a report to where none of the actual input is shown, and so nobody can go ahead and change that when you're sharing it. Um, and then you can also do a, a, a simpler layout that takes away some of the version control buttons and some of the other things. So if you, you want to make sure that um, you know, people can access data natively, but they don't have the option to edit or change some of the other uh, features of the notebook, you can go ahead and, and switch the layout.